So ICE as ideas, concerns and expectations and it's an absolutely fundamental part of the CSA. Having been both a candidate and somebody who's helped people go through their CSA exam um, and tutored them through it, it is by far the most badly done bit of the CSA. I don't think it necessarily fits in with every consultation that you do in real life. But on some occasions it's actually proved beneficial for me. Um, but it is important that you build it into every case that you do in the CSA and before you need a structure to make sure that you don't miss it. Um, it's often asked in a very awkward, very um, uh, what are your ideas, concerns and expectations sort of way and it does feel incredibly unnatural. Well, it's important to uh, decide how you will fit it in with the consultation, perhaps think about phrases that you will use and the role play books cover this very well. So the trick really is to, to get used to asking patients, you know, what, why they think they're here, what they're worried about, what they're hoping from, and getting used to asking that in a variety of different ways in your day-to-day -day consultation so that it comes naturally, so that the examiner can see you're asking for ice, but that it actually flows. Um, decide what phrases you are comfortable with, decide uh, to what extent you will go into ice depending on what sort of consultation you're doing and what sort of problem you're uh, consulting about and so on uh, and uh, embedded within that really must be some way of picking out uh, the hidden agendas uh, that the patient may have. Yeah I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. What are your ideas? What are your concerns? <laughs>